हेलो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम टू सर्जरी दादा एंड वी आर देयर बैक विद द बेड साइड क्लिनिक्स सो विद मी आई हैव माय फेलो डॉक्टर श्रीराम अय्यर सो श्रीराम टेल मी अबाउट दिस केस दैट व्हाट इज द क्लिनिकल प्रोफाइल ऑफ दिस पेशेंट एंड गिव अ ब्रीफ समरी अबाउट दिस केस सर सो दिस पेशेंट केम टू अस अ कपल ऑफ डेज बैक विद बेड सोर्स एंड ही हैज अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ फॉल वन मंथ बैक व्हिच हैज मेड हिम बेड रिडन सर and he had a past history of a uh, fracture in the shoulder and the humerus and they have done surgery for that and uh, after one month of bedridden being bedridden this patient developed bed sores in multiple areas sir so one as we can see here and one in the inner aspect of the thigh as well as one in the back lower back okay so the first thing that we get to know is that this is a decubitus ulcer or a bed sore or a pressure sore so the basic concept of this pressure sore is that whenever you are bedridden you are not mobilizing there is a loss of subcutaneous fat and that helps the external pressure to collapse the you can say vessel so i would like to ask you one very simple question what is cop can you tell me what is cop capillary occlusion, occlusion pressure. pressure okay so when we talk about cop let me tell you cop is the pressure which is required by a vessel to keep itself distended so the normal cop that we have is what is the normal value of cop so usually when the external occlusion pressure no what is what is the value of cop it is generally 30, 30 to 32 30 mm hg if the external pressure increases beyond that there will be collapse of the capillary and once there is collapse of the capillary there would be avascular necrosis or necrosis will start and then this kind of scenario will okay. develop so now now we need to understand if we talk about this as a pressure ulcer before we go into the depth what is the grading that we can see here and what is the normal grading of this so we can say it is stage 4 ulcer sir. okay it's a stage 4 so for the audience for the medical students who are watching this let me tell you we have four stages stage 1 is when we have a blanchable erythema but there is no loss of tissue grade 2 is when you have a partial thickness tissue loss grade 3 is a full thickness ulcer and grade 4 is a condition where grade 3 also is there apart from that there is there is involvement of the deeper structures like muscles like bones like cartilages there is also one thing where you cannot stage or grade it that is not known as non gradable or non stageable when there is a significant tissue loss so many a times there is significant tissue loss the bone is also lost in that case majority of the wound cannot be evaluated and that is a place that is a condition which is non gradable non stageable so now i want to ask you what are the of common sites for the ischemic ulcers or the pressure sores sir uh, usually wherever there is an increase of pressures or bony tuberosities can be a site sir and wherever there is increased pressure uh, so what are the common sites tubers. that we have uh, bony tuberosities mean okay so to make it more easy mm-hmm. and remember um, that make it uh, let us make it memorizable i always uh, teach in class mm-hmm. about a mnemonic which is it's he man mm-hmm. so it's he man that i stands for ischium mm-hmm. T stands for trochanter. It's a greater trochanter. Okay. So this is along the greater trochanteric site okay. and the ischium. Along with that, we have uh, the sacrum. We believe that sacrum has to be at the most common. No, okay. it is the it is the ischium. It is the ischium and the greater trochanter. This is the part where we have the ischial bone, ischial tuberosity, and this is the part where we have the greater trochanter. So you can see both of them. This is all almost healed. then we have the heels and we often have the malleolus now why people often talk about sir heels and and the lateral malleolus of the medial malleolus it is the medial malleolus more i would like to demonstrate something to here just re- just remove this uh, sheet now if you see the posture of this patient it is the medial malleolus which is often or which is continuously dragging against you can say the bed it is not the lateral malleolus and that is why lot of us believe it has to be lateral no it has it is the most in most often cases it is the medial malleolus and apart from that then it is the occiput that we have occiput so this is about the basics of the pressure sores now i would like to ask you how are you going to manage it how are you going to prevent it sir basic wound it it has to be done in several steps sir one basic wound management can be done debridement can be done but in bedridden patients we have to keep on changing the position for every 2 hours if the patient is on a wheelchair we have to raise the patient for every 10 minutes for 10 seconds at least and we have to drop them down so this is how we can manage prevent let, the bed let sores. me tell you 
when we talk about the comp you can say algorithm for management mm. the first thing that we need is series of debridement mm. along with that we need the along with debridement we need silver ointments mm. so silver ointments or silver ointment based dressings mm. special dressings to allow it to heal mm. many a times in this condition if you say there is a significant tissue loss mm. so they might also require a skin graft or maybe a flap mm. apart from that we have a novel technology this is not new now this is uh, this is now more than a decade old it is negative pressure dressing that is vac mm. so we are going to put a vac for this patient in this uh, video also what is vac it is vacuum assisted closure and or it is also known as the negative pressure dressing mm. the pressure that we have generally ranges from 125 to 150 mm hg mm. nowadays with the new generation advanced machines you can have a sinusoidal configuration up to 200 mm hg so minus 2 mm 100 200 mm hg this will if you see the rim of the wound there's a lot of you can see pus coming out and every day this is going to soak the dressing this is everywhere so what happens this negative suction keeps on there's an activated carbon which via the negative suction it is going to just suck out all the you can say the necrotic content and it increases the local availability of oxygen gives a negative traction and allows the wound margin to coalesce equilate so the first step that we follow is simply first you have to clean the wound we have already done the debridement someone control his hand yeah so we need to just clean this already the basic debridement has been done so we are just cleaning the wound put the spirit dalo acche se theek hai the why we are putting the spirit the spirit will not uh, uh, will not interfere with the adherence otherwise beta den will not allow the tega dum to stick so we have just prepared the site you can see the site has been prepared the next is we need to measure the size of the wound it is 8 by almost 9 cm so this is the activated carbon sponge which we have to trim and use basically it is almost the size we have already got the small one which is almost the size of this wound and once we put this on this wound we'll have to attach the negative pressure suction dressing so ready ready that we have just a minute. dressing that will put it tegadum so on this now we'll put the bigger sheet of tegadum लेकिन इसके क्यूब इससे बीच से आना चाहिए ना दिस So now this dressing has been placed on the wound, and will increase the pressure. You can see it has started to show you the suction, and this machine is now on. A pressure of minus hundred is there. We can increase the pressure up to two hundred also. So we'll keep it to start with. We'll keep it one fifty, and then we'll see how the patient is responding. In this. we also have a canister which is attached so the suction the wound you can say the the exudate would be collected and would be deposited here so this is how we do a vac suctioning for the patient so you can see the dressing has been appropriately placed so thank you for watching this video these are basics that we have to you can say understand and we are specially thankful to our patients who allow us to you can say shoot these videos for the benefit of medical you can say education and for the medical students thank you